Okay, what we're going to consider now are what we refer to as closed loop circuits. So what does this mean? Well, we're actually going to take this output and in this case, we're connecting it through this resistor back to this particular input here, which is the inverting input. This type of connection is referred to as a negative feedback connection. And look, we're going to consider a bunch of negative feedback type circuits. A little later on, we'll also look at some positive feedback circuits. Um, we're going to consider this as an ideal operational amplifier. This voltage over here typically will not be at a saturated value. All right, let's have a look at this current that's going into the op-amp. The current going into this op-amp, since we're assuming this op-amp has a very, very large input resistance, in the ideal case infinite, we're going to assume is zero. The voltage between this point and this point, which we have called VD, plus minus, we're assuming that that voltage is also going to be zero. Once again, that's because we have an infinite or very, very large open loop voltage gain. So we're assuming that guy VD to be zero. If VD is zero, well, and we have this kind of connection, that is the non-inverting input is connected to ground, then potentially speaking, the voltage here, from a potential point of view, is going to be what? Well, yes, it's going to also be zero. Now, it's not a physical connection to ground. It's what's called a virtual ground. Okay, simply means that from a voltage point of view, this is sitting, okay, at ground potential because of this connection. What we want to do is see now if we can establish a relationship between this output voltage and this input voltage. This is our signal voltage. All right, let's define some things here. Look, I'm going to put in a current direction here. I'm going to call that current I2. And of course, that current is going to travel through that resistor R2. It's going to what? It's basically going to define a voltage across it, plus minus. Okay, I'm going to define my current direction here. I'm going to call this guy I1. Um, and of course, it's going through the R1 resistor. It'll actually develop a voltage across that resistor, plus minus. What I'm going to do is take a loop, all right? So I'm going to take this little loop over here, and I'm going to sum the voltages around the loop. In other words, I'm going to be using Kirchhoff's voltage law. And the sum of the voltages around a closed loop here is going to be equal to, what, zero. All right, so plus, minus. Now, I'm assuming here, just a little convention, if I go up in potential, up in voltage, as I go around the loop, I'm going to call that positive. If I drop in voltage, plus to minus, I'm going to call it negative. So here we go. We're going to start here. So here we go. Minus to a plus, call that a positive, that's Vs. Coming to our resistor, plus to a minus, voltage drops, so I'm going to call it a minus I1 R1. So that's an I1 R1. Come across this Vd now, which is a minus to a plus, well that would be what? Plus Vd, and all of that is equal to zero. <clears throat> but don't forget, we're assuming that that voltage there, of course, is equal to zero. All right, so that, that really drops off and that basically is a zero. So what does that mean? It means that <clears throat> basically Vs then is simply taking this to the other side is really what I1 times R1. Okay, let's have a look at the output side over here. Now this, at this node we have V out. Now V out, when I just write V out in this way, that's V out measured with respect to ground. So I could rewrite that and I could say plus minus with respect to ground we have a V out sitting there like that. So the loop I'm taking basically is that loop to sum my voltages. Here I'm going to start here, I'm going to go this way around the loop. All right so I first hit V out minus to a plus. I call that V out plus V out. Okay then I come across this R2 resistor I'm dropping that's a plus to a minus so that's a minus I2 times R2. 
And then I reach my minus two plus VD, so that's a plus VD, and all of that is equal to zero. So once again, VD, of course, is zero. So what does that mean? It means if I take this to the other side, my V out then is simply equal to I2 uh, times R2. All right, what next? Well, uh, I could sum the currents at this node over here. Okay, Kirchhoff's current law, the sum of currents entering a node is equal to zero. If it's going into the node, I'll call the current positive. If it's going out, I'll call it negative. Well, let's see what we've got. We've got I1 going into the node. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. I've got I1, okay, going in. Um, I've got I2 going into the node, so that's a plus I2 going into the node. And then, of course, I do have this current here, but, but because that operational amplifier here has an infinite or very, very large input resistance, that current there is effectively zero. Okay, so I can ignore it. It's zero. And so then I've got I1 plus the I2 entering the node all is equal to zero. Okay, now where do we go from here? Well, look. Above here, I've got my relationship between I1 and V of S. So I1 from that expression is what? I1 is simply equal to uh, that V of S uh, divided by that R1. So that's coming from my expression here, isn't it? And then from my expression over here, I've basically got what? I2 is what? Is equal to V out, and that's divided by R2. So if I take this guy and I put it in here and I take this guy and I'm going to put it in here, what do we get? Well, we get Vs over R1 is going to be, or rather plus, Vout over R2 is all equal to zero. So taking this to the other side, we have of course Vs over R1 is equal to a minus V out over R2. And if I want to determine the ratio V out over Vs, then V out over Vs is simply equal to minus R2 over R1. And that is the relationship between the output and input voltage that is the voltage gain of this closed loop amplifier configuration. This is actually referred to as an inverting amplifier. An inverting amplifier simply because V out over Vs is a minus R2 over R1. So because we have an operational amplifier in a circuit with a very, very large input resistance, a very, very large open loop gain, then by constructing our circuit in this way, our gain now for the closed loop configuration, V out of a VS, is simply a ratio of those two resistors. And note the minus sign indicating inversion. Another thing we might want to look at with the inverting amplifier is uh, the input resistance. And what do we mean by input resistance? Well, it's the resistance looking in here that this signal source is seeing. Okay, so look, let's have a look at this. We've got a current here which we called I1. And so that input resistance, R in, is simply going to be equal to uh, basically this Vs divided by that current I1. All right, remember what we did here to find the relationship between Vs and I1 was basically to take a loop and we simply sum those voltages around the loop. Okay, so we started here and we said we had what? Vs going up in voltage uh, plus minus. So we're dropping in voltage. So that's a minus I1 times R1. And then, of course, the Vd voltage here uh, we assume to be zero. And so we'd completed the loop, assuming that to be zero. And all of this is equal to zero, which gave us what? It gave us that basically Vs is equal to I1 times R1. We want to find what? Vs divided by I1, and so Vs divided by I1 is simply equal to the resistor R1. So in the case of the inverting amplifier, the input resistance that the signal 
source C is, is just this resistance R1. And then remember, of course, the voltage gain of that inverting amplifier is simply minus R2 over the R1.